All of us know the obvious difference between a discussion and an argument. You know, in the first one, there is real communication and dialogue, but the latter is more of a kind of engagement, hostile opposition. And I propose you today in our gospel, the Sadducees are attempting this second aspect of engaging, that of argumentation. They're locked in a struggle for power and influence in the chosen people. We're now in chapter 20 of the 24 chapters of Luke's gospel, as we are now nearing in two weeks the end of our liturgical year. In chapter 18, our Lord has told the apostles of the necessity he must go to Jerusalem to suffer and die. In chapter 19, St. Luke has recounted that entrance into Jerusalem. And then the first activity of the Lord there, which is the driving the money changers out of the temple. And immediately after that event, we are told that the leaders of the people were intent on finding a way to put him to death. And now in chapter 20, there are three attempts, if you will, and the last one of the three is the one we hear about in our gospel. The questions posed by the Sadducees about the brothers successively marrying the one woman and what that will mean in eternity is not meant for any real and meaningful discussion, but it is an accusation against the Lord to try to trick him and to trap him. But of course, Jesus knows this. <laughs> he is God, and he is preaching in the temple this sign of God's presence among the people. He has come to Jerusalem to establish the new Jerusalem, the church. And so he does not respond to their argumentation with that same level of anger. But he responds as he always responds, in love. To propose to them a deeper understanding of who he is and how life is meant to be lived in him now and then for eternity. He teaches them about the sacrament of marriage. That this is not an end in and of itself that can be manipulated and changed according to popular and particular circumstances of a time and culture. But the sacrament of matrimony is something that points us to the love of God. As Christ loves the church and unites himself to her to fill her with life and grace, a man and a woman are united in marriage, sealed by his love in a permanent and life-giving embrace that then discloses and symbolizes God's love for us. But just as we have signs and symbols to guide us whenever we're on a long journey, whether it be on the roads or in the airports, once we arrive at our destination, <laughs> we don't need signs anymore. In the kingdom of heaven, there is a union with God that every person will experience that fills them with perfect and unending love to which marriage is meant to point. All of our loves flow from God's love for us, and all of them must then refer back to and be ordered to our love of God. This is a lesson of our first reading, this chapter of the second book of Maccabees, tells of the horrific torture of seven brothers in the presence of their mother. And we hear today of the first four brothers, their heroic courage. That is nothing less than an acknowledgement of the truth that God has given us our life and everything in this life, and that we are then called to give back to him all that he has given to us. What glory these brothers and their mother now share with all the martyrs in the history of the faith. This Monday, we will mark Veterans Day, that day that we especially recall and honor our veterans. They embody for us in a particular way selfless love. Throughout our history, these men and women have sacrificed so much, some giving the ultimate sacrifice of their lives for our freedom that God has given to us as a nation. We thank them for their sacrifice we pray for all of our veterans that God will reward them for their service and lead them to the glory of heaven. 
We pray that their heroism may inspire us. We pray, as St. Paul puts it, that we may grow to the love of God and the endurance of Christ to be sustained in the everlasting encouragement and good hope through the grace of God. And so we strive to persevere in our life of faith and hope and love until one day we pray that we will be welcomed into that glory of heaven where they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but where all are consumed in the fullness of nuptial love, united forever in the perfect and never-ending love of God.